Hello, everyone. My name is Richard Harper, and I'm a safety consultant with Kentucky Safe. And this is a forklift hazard alert webinar. Uh, so in this webinar, we'll be discussing some common hazards that we find um, regarding forklifts in a general industry setting. All right, so before we kind of get into that, um, do need to go over our disclaimer. Uh, so uh, for those of you that have actually set in on some of our uh, previous webinars or some of our trainings, uh, this should look familiar. Um, essentially what this is, is saying is um, this webinar uh, will not make you a competent or qualified person. Uh, so again, we're just going to be touching on just some common just some common thing issues that we find regarding forklifts. So we're not going to be going over all 178. Uh, so, you know, essentially this uh, webinar is not going to certify you as a uh, forklift operator. All right. All right. Next, I wanted to go um, over some uh, statistics. Uh, so the first one is according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, from 2011 to 2017, there were 614 uh, fatalities involving forklifts and more than 7,000 um, injuries that require days away from work every year um, between that time frame. Um, and for those of you that are curious as far as like a regulatory standpoint, um, according to OSHA.gov, there were 1,515 citations that were cited between uh, October 2019 to September uh, 2020. Uh, so fiscal year 2020 uh, related to forklifts, uh, totaling 3,992,636 dollars in penalties. All right. So again, uh, quite a few fatalities and injuries occurring regarding forklifts and uh, quite a few citations. So you know, hopefully this webinar uh, will we'll be able to go over some common things that again, are found and you know, maybe we can try to reduce some of these. All right, so again, these are the uh, common hazards that we typically find. And so these are what we're gonna be going over um, in this webinar. Uh, so just to go ahead and list them out, um, nameplate and data plate missing or illegible, uh, modification of forklift without approval, lack of or no inspection of the forklift, and lack of or no training. All right. Uh, so again, uh, name plate or data plate is missing or illegible. Uh, so the name plate, uh, also called the data plate, in which I'll be referring to um, as in this uh, webinar, uh, provides important information uh, for the forklift operator, uh, such as uh, the fuel type. Uh, the forklift weight, uh, the limitations and capabilities of the forklift itself, as well as the attachments um, that are going to be used with it. Uh, so again, um, this, um, this information is important uh, uh, for operators as, um, again, they can reference the limitations and capabilities of the forklifts that they are operating. Uh, so not having um, access to this data plate, either again, it being missing or illegible, um, would then, you know, essentially not allow them access to um, that important information. Essentially, the operators would, you know, haven't, would have to essentially be guessing what the capabilities are for the forklift attachments um, and for the forklift itself. And essentially what that can lead to is, um, the operator actually overloading the forklift itself or the attachment, and that could eventually lead to something known as a, a tip over. All right. Um, so um, if you look at your screen, um, you'll see, you should see uh, two um, pictures. So we're going to quickly go over those. Um, one is an example of a legible one, one is an example of an illegible one. Uh, so um, of course, um, the legible one, if um, you haven't noticed already, is the uh, topmost picture. 
Uh, so again, this is a, like I said, example of what a data plate should look like. You know, again, it's nice and legible. I can see the serial number. I can see the truck weight. Um, you know, I can see what the capacities are with standard forks. I can read what the attachment is. Um, it's saying that it's a, it uh, is a side shifter attachment can be used on that forklift. Um, I can also read the attachment table, finding out what the capacity and rating for that side shifter is. Uh, versus if you look at the bottom most picture, um, really the only thing you know, I can really make out is it looks to be a battery powered forklift. I mean, you can kind of make out the battery down at the, the bottom of that photo. But again, when you start looking at the attachment table, you can't really read any of um, the capacities of the attachment or the forklift weight and what its overall capacity is. Uh, so again, a data plate that looks like this um, would need to be replaced as again, you know, the operator wouldn't be able to necessarily read all the important information. And one way the and the most easiest way to replace it is, again, if you know the manufacturer um, or model number of the forklift, just give the manufacturer a call, uh, give them the model number, and they'll send you out another data plate. All right. And um, also, I do want to mention as well, if you look at the bottom left corner, that is the OSHA standard um, that is related um, to this subject. So I wanted to point that out. All right, so next we're gonna go over modification of forklift without approval. Uh, so again, any type of modifications or additions to the forklift that are outside what um, the manufacturer has sent you or what um, essentially you bought it as, um, you can't add any type of modifications or attachments to it without the manufacturer's written approval. Um, so some examples of modifications. Uh, so again, uh, you should see two photos on your screen. So we'll go on and take a look at the topmost photo. Um, so again, essentially in this photo, really the one thing I kind of want to point out is uh, if you can see there is a 55 gallon drum attached to the back of the forklift. Um, now again, um, you know, these forklift, forklifts are again designed from the factory. They're manufactured to, um, to a certain weight specifications. Uh, most of them, again, the back of the forklift actually has what is known as a counterweight, and that's to offset the actual um, weight of the load that it's lifting. So when you begin to add on additional weight, either to the back of the forklift to the sides, you know, you're affecting the capacities of that forklift. So again, you know, adding something, you know, even something such as a 55 gallon drum, again, that could potentially affect um, the way that the forklift operates. So you don't want to do anything like that, unless again, you contact the manufacturer and get the you know, approval on that. Another example uh, that we commonly see as far as like a modification um, is to the attachments themselves. So if you look at the bottom of this image, uh, you'll see that the employer in this photograph has actually drilled holes into the forks um, in order to actually um, use it for uh, lifting operations. Um, again, uh, typically the forks you know, are not made to lift. Um, they're not made to be drilled into, all right? Uh, and so by drilling into them, you're essentially potentially compromising the integrity um, of that attachment. Uh, they do make specific attachments uh, that you can actually connect onto the forks to be used for lifting. Uh, but when you do something like this, especially without the manufacturer's approval, and say you go to lift a heavy piece of equipment, uh, such as, which is used for example, the one in, again in the top photo, um, there's a potential that you can end up um, bending or, in a worst case scenario, snapping the tip of the fork off. 
And again, essentially what that larger object has become is a fallen object. And I mean, it could, if you've got any employees down guiding the load underneath something like that, you know, now it becomes a crushing hazard. All right. So again, uh, you don't want to modify any of the attachments, again, without the manufacturer's written approval. And one other thing I just want to briefly touch on to uh, And another thing I want to briefly touch on is um, if you create your own attachment. So um, occasionally I've been in some facilities where they decide to actually just build their own forklift attachment. Again, when you're building your own attachment to put on the forklift, again, you're making a potential modification or addition to that forklift. Uh, so, again, you require the manufacturer's written approval. So, again, just wanted to touch on that. All right. So, lack of or no inspection of the forklift. So, again, forklifts are like any other uh, type of piece of equipment. And that is stuff just, I mean, eventually stuff just wears out on them. You know, they just, um, like I said, like any other type of piece of machinery. Uh, so it's for this reason why um, OSHA requires them to be inspected. They have to be at least inspected daily. Um, and if you're using the forklift constantly throughout the day um, per shift, then it has to be inspected per shift. Uh, and essentially what the operators need to be looking for during these inspections are things such as you know, the fluids, uh, the lifting attachments themselves, such as you know, the forks, Make sure that they're not um, broken or deformed, anything like that, um, as well as some of the safety devices, um, such as the seat belt, you know, ROPS, as well as the data plate, you know, making sure that it's legible, making sure it's you know, legible and the operator can, can see it, all right? Um, and in this section, one, the kind of touch over seat belts, uh, because they are important, so seat belts are required on all trucks manufactured um, 1992 uh, to later. Um, so ensure, and the reason being is um, essentially what a seat belt is, is it confines the operator, it assists in confining the operator to the cab in the event of a uh, rollover or tip over. Um, essentially what we found in a uh, and several fatalities is in the event of a tip over, the, uh, whenever the forklift begins to tip over, if an operator is not utilizing their seatbelt, they can actually be thrown from the cab or in a lot of instances, they'll try to beat the forklift and or they'll try to jump out and try to beat the forklift as it's um, going over. And, you know, in a lot of those cases, they end up not beating it and they end up getting crushed by actually the forklift itself, the actual body of the forklift, or again, the, the ROP system, um, the rollover protection system that's there designed, you know, to protect them. So again, one big thing, um, you want to make sure uh, that you're inspecting the seatbelt, making sure it's there for one thing, make sure it's functional. All right. All right. And then lack of or no training. Uh, so again, um, with um, forklifts being, you know, pretty complex piece of machinery and has, you know, there's a lot of things to it. Um, we, we OSHA require uh, training on forklifts. Um, the standard requires both a formal, uh, practical, and an evaluation uh, be conducted. Um, essentially, what the formal training is, it can be composed of what is called a lecture. Um, I commonly refer to it as a classroom-based portion. Um, essentially, um, a lot of times I've seen it uh, conducted via PowerPoint with an instructor. Um, but you can also uh, do it video-based. 
training, so with videos, or you can also, um, the standard also allows for a computer-based portion. Um, and essentially, um, after the formal um, portion is conducted, uh, you'll have to do a practical portion, and that's commonly referred to as the hands-on portion. That's where, um, or a road test is what um, I typically refer to it as. Um, and that's essentially where the um, trainee is actually performing some basic um, maneuvers with that powered industrial truck, that forklift that they would kind of in the workplace. You know, making sure that they can actually operate it safely, making sure that they understand, um, you know, um, the controls, things like that. Um, so wanted to touch on just what some of the training, what all that training kind of has to go over. So it has to include truck related topics and workplace related topics. Uh, so it's, um, examples for truck related are, you know, again, the operating instructions. So how to operate it, um, information for each attachment that's going to be used on that truck. Again, the capacity of um, the forklift of the truck how to inspect it, um, some of its operating limitations, and then a couple examples for work-related, you know, again, how it's going to be used in the workplace, so what type of loads they're going to be typically lifting, you know, in your workplace, um, how to deal with pedestrians, like what's the rule regarding, you know, giving them the right of way, you know, things of that nature. And several, um, if you use any type of gas powered trucks, um, the areas where they'll be um, in low ventilation areas, you know, things like that. And this must be done per truck. Uh, so again, um, say you have several different types of forklifts in your facility, such as like a sit down, a stock picker or a reach truck, um, you have to conduct um, training on each specific type of truck. Now, again, it can all be in one setting, um, but you must go over the truck related topics, you know, the, again, the operating and the capacities, the limitations, as well as how they're going to be used in a workplace for each of those types of trucks because they function differently. They have different uses and different purposes. Um, but after you get done with the training, um, you'll have to prepare a certification uh, record um, that'll have to include the name of the operator, the data of training, and the evaluation portion if it was conducted on a different day, uh, and the name of the trainer that trained them. And you know, essentially after uh, you prepare that certification after you get done um, certifying them. That is good for at least three years before you have to recertify them or unless the operator is involved in an accident. All right. All right. And uh, with that, that concludes our forklift hazard alert webinar. So, again, hopefully um, some of these things that we went over will help assist, assist you all. Um, and going back to your workplaces and um, becoming familiar with these, hopefully you'll be able to um, go back and look at these things. And if you had any of these issues, correct them. So that way we can, you know, hopefully reduce the number of injuries as well as the number of citations related to forklifts. Um, again, like I said, this was our forklift hazard alert webinar. I do want to uh, mention um, if you, haven't already, uh, check out some of our other webinars on um, www.kysafe.gov. Again, we've got several webinars going over various topics. Uh, so definitely check those out. And again, my name is Richard Harper, and I'm a safety consultant with, with KYSafe. And thank you.